On the previous episode, we had just arrived to Grand Cayman. We'd cleared in and been designated a mooring ball. We're getting close or am I going back? Yeah. Am I too far? Yeah. Okay, I'll get you back. You're good. Yeah. I'm on Oh well, I will just go and get it in the morning. Can we get a sailboat chasing down the sunset as we float? Round and round the globe. This is Margarita, the normal one in a not quite normal marriage. And this is Peter. He's a little bit different, which keeps me on my toes. Together we are on an adventure that didn't work out as planned, but we are fighting back, so come join us. Good morning from the Caymans! Peter is still sleeping, he has to catch up in all the days of the trip and he hasn't been feeling really good because his head is hiking because when he pumped his head I'm just gonna retrieve the um, pole hook that it dropped yesterday I hope I'll find it Pole retrieved! Now with my mission completed and a good night's sleep it's time feed this belly with some yummy breakfast good morning again now with the beautiful open up yeah, I'm a little tired <laughs> so we're gonna um, yesterday when we were approaching Caymans we got in contact with um, Port Authority and they gave indications where we should come um, we parked about right at their doorstep we just went in did the papers, everything super easy, they came on board, just did a quick look around and unfortunately we had to pay um, the $70 fee because we came after hours. If wasn't that, it would be but, for free. Check-in in the Caymans, it's free. Yeah, but poor Margarita, she couldn't last another day. It was pretty... She didn't eat much for the, what, four and a half days, did you? Well, she did eat. But I had food because I would be starving, but and then and then I would be vomiting. Yeah, that's okay. We did it. No. This was actually my first um, real that we can count as real passage because when we came from Mexico, that doesn't count because we were drifting. There was no wind, and there was so, it was like a bathtub, it was yeah, flat. And then the other sailing that we did in Belize and Panama. It's, it was like short sailing, nothing And it was all protected. Major. This was the real first thing that we had really like thirty five knot winds, really huge gusts of forty coming. And we were beating, rain, we were big beating, waves. beating for the first three and a half days. That's okay for me because we're going into wind. But was going because into wind we're just stayed in one position and oh. I don't get as much seasick. Like going with the wind it's faster and it's there you go. Better, but first worse people. for me. Margarita prefers going into wind at 40 degrees. Because otherwise you like a pendulum. Actually, it's boom, funny. The boom, first boom, night, boom. the first night, remember, I said, oh, I want to reduce sail because we were expecting some more squalls the first night. Uh, well, there was a possibility. And um, and we were skipping off the waves. We were going so fast. And I said, oh, how about we, uh, how about I reduce sail? We'll slow it down a bit. She goes, I'm not slowing it down. It's my shift. And so I, I couldn't sleep because I was bouncing around like a fart in a pickle bottle. But we were going, we, we were going we were eight knots. I think we averaged seven and a half knots. And she had a shift of she was supposed to do three or four hours. She did nine. Because I got, hours. I can I can stay awake at nine. It's nine hours. So this is an good. ideal ideal sailing girl, except for the seasick. We yeah. I still think we can get over this, but Margarita's got it in the head, but she can't. We'll see. She loves beating in the wind because it's it's more rock solid, it's mm. less wallowing. Like we're doing uh, now. Yeah, she does nine hour shifts and would have done another three or four hours had I not kicked up a stink and another argument, of course. Margarita is very independent and likes her own way. Um, the only suggestion Margarita can have is something that comes from her own mind. Anyway, so she did... Ranging, you like to range? Yeah, so, um. so she would have done a 12-hour shift, maybe 13, over the darkness. 
So yes, your ideal boat chick. So uh, and I reckon you're gonna you you're good with seasickness. Oh, so you're you trying me, get... you're trying to sell me to someone so you can get rid of me? No. Because it looks I'm like just, I'm just, I'm bragging, people. I'm bragging. <laughs> look what I got. Yeah. No, you, no, she's, she's you got a girl that likes boats and likes to do the night shift that he doesn't like but gets seasick. How good is that? Yeah, but you don't. You still function. You're seasick. You do. You, you know. You you vomit. <laughs> And you go on like this, uh, and I go, come on, we've got a reef. And then it's battle station. So it's not as if you're incapacitated. Yeah, but when I'm out of my shift, I don't, I just stay closed in my bunk. Trying to sleep. Well, we're sailing. And what I don't do? cook. I don't do anything. You have to well, do everything for me because so I get, what? I throw up. Well, how much effort is that? Anyway. Now, after breakfast, we're just going to go for a wonder see what to visit around and trying to contact Doug! Doug, who helped me sail from Panama, um, sorry, from Guatemala to Panama and he is, he's one of, he's a special guy, I think he's, uh, he's Canadian. There's something very close to Canadians and Australians. His accent's different, but... Um, I will resume. He's, what he's trying to say is, he likes Doug's a, Doug a lot. Doug is here in the Cayman being crew too. A fancy catamaran and we're trying to hook up with him to see if we can do cool stuff yeah. so All right. see you later bye Six luxury cruises out there. First and foremost is Freedom, right in the front. And then we got five huge, massive boats. And this is what happens when there are five cruise ships just sitting out the front. It's packed. I think she's happy. She's in charge. This is Margarita's holiday. We're doing all her sorts of stuff. Because there's no spearfishing allowed. So I'm all grumpy pants. Here is Michael Jackson's long lost brother. He can't do the moonwalk for shit, but nonetheless, he spices up the act of wading and crossing the road tremendously. You know other countries they have dogs walking around? In this place they have roosters and chickens. They're everywhere. So if we're hungry, we know where to go. Margarita, you're a hundred times the size of it. I don't like birds, remember? Margarita's scared of birds. I'm scared of Margarita. <laughs> Margarita, can you get a trolley? Yeah. That's a margarita sized trolley. It'll be full though, for the chocolate Oreos. All the goodies. You're little, but you got a big appetite. It's a good thing you've only got a little trolley. I oh, know. Margarita's a poor little lamb. She hasn't eaten much in five days. So now she's on a seafood diet. She's seeing all sorts of food and she's eating it. Look at these tarpons, they're huge. Like huge, it's like cats. The fishermen, they do the fish there, so they just sit here like waiting. Give me some, give me some. A woman marries a man expecting he will change, but he doesn't. 
and a man marries a woman, hoping she won't change. And she does. Many people have asked me how do I care for my hair and how do I make it silky smooth? Well actually hardly any. Three Germans in Berlin uh, ask me quite frequently and they ask me other things too but let's not get into it. Well normally to keep my hair looking so well the way it is, I don't know how to describe it, is I need to uh, spend three hours rolling this way and then three hours rolling this way and then the wind blows it and then I have to have like an epiphany or two in the day and I um, scratch my head and that's how my hair stays silky smooth. At the moment Margarita has to use rather aggressive tactics and get rid of these dreads because she can't stand dreads and I don't like them either. No, he's a liar because he now has so many dreads that he cannot stand them. And yes, I'm upset with them because he looks ugly, looks like a gypsy, doesn't wash himself, and then has hair like this. This is two years of happy marriage, people. Yeah, who has their husbands not washing their hair and not brushing themselves? Okay, I'm just going to have to stop it right there, people. Margarita is speaking in code. I can see that probably a few out there are a bit uncomfortable because it looks like Margarita is supremely pissed with me. But no, people, it's code. And I'm going to show you as an example, and I'm going to decipher this and give you the true message in all of her expressions and words. No, he's a liar because he now has so many dreads that he cannot stand them. And yes, I'm upset with them. Now, it seems like she's pissed with me and she's disgusted. And some might even argue there is a great, grave look of disdain there as well. But no, it's oozing with love. Her voice and words are oozing with love. She's saying, I love you, Peter. He looks ugly. He looks like a gypsy. Now, this bit uncoded is also... I love you. Your hair is beautiful. It makes happiness and rainbows fill the sky. Yeah, who has their husbands not washing their hair and not brushing themselves? Now this bit uncoded is thank you for sailing all of those long hours without any rest or any time to do anything for yourself. When I was sick, you took the helm in all of those strong gusts and all the rain. You were out there in all of it just to save me the worry and the stress. And I love you for it. Yes, I love you. Some parts. I'll, 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 I wanted to film it. I'm calling that Alfred. In some parts of the world, they name hurricanes. I name my dread. I'm starting today. It's Alfred. Can you just don't move. Margaret is not very happy with me. You kind of look, look, look over retarded. Bye, <laughs> bye, Barry. You want to have to? You want to feel it? How retarded you look? Look, this hair I is feel, here, and this one is here. I feel very special with Margarita always. But when she gets angry, <laughs> it's not going to be a pleasant evening in the boat. Now, just to see if you've learned something from all of this, check out this picture over here. Now, to many married men out there, that look, you probably say, oh, that's a bit of disgust, disdain, contempt even, maybe even a little bit of hate. But you'd be wrong. Oh, bugger this. I feel like I'm in the conversation over there. Now, this is actually the look of A, love, B, respect, C, love and respect, or D, love, respect, peppered with adoration. Come on, people. Remember, it's a very good code. And you'd be right if you guessed D. Good on you. I can hear the quiet roar across the world. Wow. Ah. Now check out Margarita's look. In the next picture, I know what you're thinking. Is it dislike? Is it disgust? Even to the point of revulsion? And you'd be wrong, people.
Margarita's look is the look of A, love, B, pleasure, C, rapture, or D, love, pleasure, peppered with rapture. Come on, people. Oh, they're all right, although D is a bit more correct than the others. It was a trick question, just like all the trick questions I get from Margarita that my brain is too feeble to get out of without getting into a bloody argument. Now, some of you out there are probably going to say, Plucky, you've got no idea, mate. My wife's code is indecipherable. It's unbreakable. I reckon she hates me. Everything I do disgusts her. I reckon she even wants me dead. Now, that seems like a pretty good code. So good a code that even the Polish mathematicians in World War II at Bletchley Park would have thrown up their arms and said, I can't do it, and they would have buggered off. Yes, that seems like a pretty difficult code, but Margarita's Portuguese, and that's the best code there is. And I've had a lot of experience with it. Look, you stick with me, take some notes, and you can have a happy marriage too. Look, this is a face of a happily married man. That's an orderly that we uh, just missed out on, which is very good because it would be in a real bitch. It's going to have 40 knots in it apparently. So um, I'm so glad we got to the cans before that. Right on time. We are here, and Harbour Patrol told us we must move to here. All the cruise ships are going round as well. They will be very lucky and see my nakedness all day. You're welcome, cruise ship people. You're welcome. Come here, engineers. You're letting the side down. You can throw at least another five, six levels on that. Maybe ten. A new mooring ball was designated to us on the south side. With big gusts coming in, I'm not leaving it to chance. I've got to check the mooring out. It's actually less rusty than my chain, so it's all good. And the rope is fine. We are safe here. There was a southerly swell running, completely unopposed to any land, so a bridle was necessary. Now, I wanted to stay with the boat all day. Look, the squall's going to come through 40 knots. Yes, we were on the lee side of the island, but we had swell coming from the southeast and the winds coming from the northwest. So it was a bit of a higgledy-piggledy situation. So I said to Margarita, how about you not stay on the rocky boat all day? You go into town and go and enjoy yourself, and I'll keep an eye on the boat. But I actually had an ulterior motive, people. I wanted to do the beer ad commercials. Now, a lot of people think the beer ad was we got paid to put the beer on our vlog. No, not at all. I, it was a metaphoric beer. I wanted some support, people. But basically, no one got the idea. So anyway, I thought, okay, I jumped in on the side. There was heaps of caves and canyons, and I thought, perfect for the beer ad. And so basically, all day was spent in the water when I filming and one eye on the boat. Basically, to make the beer ad, all I needed to do was to swim underwater a planned circuit about 30 times, with another 30 more dives setting the camera up at the best places. It all went well, despite the strong wave action, even at 10 metres down. There were only two hiccups. I set up this camera, and before I could get into the shot, I then set it up again and was lucky. Wait for it. Ah! Now, without further ado, here is the final product. There is no turning back. We have to take the plunge. We have to find the right path. No depth is too great. No terrain too hard. We must go on. We must. Many of the others look down upon us, but we will survive. We must.
There is no other alternative other than oblivion. All has been cast in one final throw. Sometimes we come upon a junction and we don't know which way to turn. But I sense something now. There. That way. It must be to the right path. The feeling is getting stronger. Even stronger now. My air is getting low, but the path is leading us deeper. We have no choice but to go on and go deeper and deeper. But wait, I can see a light at the end of this tunnel. There! There, people! There it is! There is salvation! That will save us! Grab it! Hold on tight and don't let go! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Yes! 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 So after the perfect crime, I did all day uh, filming in the water. Margarita wanted to get picked up, so I went and picked her up. Now, the poor cruise ship people, I really feel sorry for them. The owners of the cruise ship, one of the officers, he dropped his waterproof radio in the water. Worth 400 bucks, apparently. Whoa, that had come in handy in our boat. And he wanted it, uh, us to get it for him. And I went, no worries. I gave him a bit of a hard time and pretended I was going to take it for myself. just a little bit too much of a hard time. Sometimes I can be too Australian and some people don't seem to understand that. Oh well, look, things might be looking up for us people. I had a nice Israeli guy throwing me money. Who would have thought? Anyway, he got his radio back and I got to feel good that I helped someone because that's what the world's about people. It's about helping people. Anyway, if you like the video, give it a like and subscribe and press the bell button and we'll be seeing you next week for lots of Cayman fun filled fullness of fun and filledness. <laughs>